Hey everybody, David here, and today I want to do my top 10 list uh, for the movies of 2018. Uh, 2018 is pretty much over, and uh, yeah, I want to share all the movies I've seen this year. Now, I've seen about almost 30 films this year that were released in theaters. Um, just to let you know, some of the movies that definitely won't be on this list... Uh, some of the worst of the year because I never do worst lists, uh, but uh, there are always a few that you check out that uh, that are the worst. I try to avoid the worst if I can, um, and these are the worst that unfortunately I checked out uh, because my curiosity was on the table, and I thought maybe the reviews are wrong, maybe uh, they're they're you know because sometimes you don't always agree with critics uh but this these are the ones that i happen to agree with them on uh the first one being the happy time murders i mean muppets swearing why not uh unfortunately it didn't do that great and uh, i i can see why it wasn't that great uh the meg i was hoping for some stupid fun which i heard some people did have stupid fun with it uh for myself it, it wasn't fun it was boring it lost me like on the last act i was just totally tur turned off i wasn't even paying attention to what was happening towards the end so uh that's why i never did a review for it because i didn't think it was fair for me to do a review for a movie that i didn't see fully uh another one was fantastic beast the crimes of grindelwald it was okay but uh, not enough to make my top 10 uh, not even close. Um, the Mowgli movie on, on Netflix. Uh, look, just stick with the Jungle Book from Disney. Uh, even the animated version was a little bit better than this one. I did think it had a really good cast and a lot of potential. Uh, but no, not on my list. And of course, Venom did not make my list. Um, I know some people are enjoying it, but I'm sure it won't make a lot of top 10s. Uh, Venom was one that I was... Uh, really disappointed with uh so let's get into my top 10 and look you don't have to agree with me and you don't have to get angry and dislike just because you disagree with me we all have our different tastes and opinions on film and that's the great thing about film is that uh we're all gonna see something differently than other people we all have our reasons for liking it or disliking it so be civil and uh, share your top 10. You know, it's not only my list that counts, it's everybody's lists. Uh, I do these videos to try to communicate with my fellow movie nerds. So uh, let's get right into it. At number 10, I have the latest Aquaman. That's right. Some people uh, are mixed with this movie. You know, some people love it like I did. Some people didn't love it. Uh, they thought it was too cheesy. But uh, I had a conversation with some family members about Aquaman this weekend and uh, they they didn't love it like uh, you know but uh, I got it I understood why I mean yeah it was cheesy and if you can't handle the cheese then uh, <laughs> it's not gonna be for you but for me I, I loved it I, I enjoyed every minute of it look it's not a perfect movie I'm not saying that uh, but I had a great time I had a blast and uh, look if you want to have a good time watching a movie just let loose just turn off your brain for a little bit you know you don't always have to use your brain especially for certain films uh this is one that you can just have a fun time with go watch it drunk watch it high you'll enjoy it believe me uh number nine on my list is deadpool 2 i love the first deadpool movie and deadpool 2 i think is a worthy successor um, Ryan Reynolds just kills it as this character and bringing in Josh Brolin as Cable who had such a terrific year this year with three movies uh, one of them didn't make it as big as the other two that are on this list but uh, Deadpool 2 definitely uh, I, I think it's definitely worth a watch especially if you enjoy the first Deadpool movie uh, even check out the super duper cut because they add a lot more uh scenes that were not seen in the theatrical cut that are even more funnier and remember to always check the post credit scenes because uh there's some funny really funny ones uh, that are there even in the super duper cut at the very end so next on my list at number eight i have mission impossible fallout this was a badass film i just watched it again last night um yeah tom cruise this is his franchise 
Uh, it's just been getting in better and better ever since Mission Impossible 3. Uh, so to have Mission Impossible 5 make my lists uh, in recent years, uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. Especially since I never really cared for the franchise back when it originally started. Uh, back in 1996, the original Mission Impossible came out. Uh, Mission Impossible 2 was terrible, but 3 and onward uh, just gets better and better, I think. Uh, Ghost Protocol is still my favorite, but Fallout is a nice, worthy success f successor uh, for anyone that has been following since the third film. Next on my list, I have Incredibles 2. Uh, I love the first Incredibles movie when that first came out. Uh, I still remember seeing it in theaters, and of course I had to go see this one. And I'm going to admit, I saw it maybe two, three more times since it came out, and uh, Incredibles 2, man, it's it's risen on my list a little bit. I enjoyed it uh, each more every time I viewed it, so uh, this is definitely a worthy sequel. Still, I don't think it's as good as the first one, but... Uh, it's worthy. It's worthy. So uh, there you go. Uh, moving on to number six, I have Ant-Man and the Wasp. Not a lot of people love this movie. Some people liked it. That was about it. Yeah, it was fine. That's what some people said. But I was more like, no, this is hilarious. I love this. I was cracking up from beginning to end. I thought it was so much fun. I know not a lot of a lot of people are going to look at it and be like, yeah, it was average. But for me, I I don't know. I think Paul Rudd is hilarious. I think the supporting cast are funny. Uh, the villain was, yeah, the little weak spot in the movie. But I didn't mind it. And I do like Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer uh, in, in these roles as more as uh, mentor figures. Especially since what they meant in the past of Hollywood. You know, these are two Hollywood icons. And to have them being supporting characters to... Evangeline Lilly, who kicks ass in this movie, and uh, Paul Rudd. I think it's a it's a nice combination of everything. So, moving on to number five on my list, I have Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Uh, this was a great animated film. If you haven't seen it, go check this movie out right now. It's still in theaters. Um, this is surprising to me that I, I did not. W was won over by the trailers. I thought the trailers were a little underwhelming. They looked okay to me, but um, I wasn't blown away like other people were. Like, a lot of people were talking about the animation since the first trailer. And I was like, I don't think that the animation looks that great. And then when you watch the actual movie, um, yeah, I, I started seeing that... the an I started getting more used to the animation style and... I can see the creativeness behind it now. Um, so yeah, I actually really enjoyed this movie a lot. The story, the character of Miles Morales is now in my subconscious. Now I know who he is. Now I wouldn't mind seeing him in a live action Spider-Man film. Maybe after Tom Holland retires, they want to replace him. Get, bring in Miles Morales to take over the mantle in the MCU. Especially since they already set him up in Homecoming. Uh, going into number four, I have Ready Player One. Spielberg returns to the big screen. I really enjoy this movie a lot. I thought, look, the special effects weren't meant to be huge because you're supposed to feel like you're in a digital world. Um, I really did like the little Easter eggs throughout. But I really did like the story uh, involving this kid. It, obviously, it reminds you of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's what it's meant to do. Um, but I think it adds a little bit of its own, especially with the digital realm. Uh, I really, the, the virtual reality world that he goes into and is in the characters that are in the film as well. I hope Ben Mendelsohn doesn't get stuck as playing the bad guy all the time. We're going to get him as the bad guy again in uh, Captain Marvel. But, uh, you know, I, I had a great time. I think Spielberg still has the magic. Some people felt like he was losing it for a little bit. But I I think this certifies, no, he still has it. He'll just do the big blockbusters when he feels like it. And this was a nice return to that uh, for me. So if you're a fan of Spielberg, this is definitely one to check out. Uh, moving on to number three, I have Creed 2. Uh, I really enjoyed Creed 1 a lot. That was my favorite film of 2015. Creed 2 
not as good as Creed 1, but I thought it was a worthy successor um, to the previous Creed film. And uh, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. I'm so glad Dolph Lundgren is having a resurgence. I was a huge fan of the, the Masters of the Universe film when I was a kid. And uh, to see him uh, where he is today, popping up in Aquaman and now in Creed 2, uh, reprising the role that got him started, um, it, it's really cool to see him. And especially when you learn uh, about who he is as a person, uh, it's nice to see good people being rewarded with uh, success. So uh, moving on to my number two favorite film of the year, another Michael B. Jordan film, uh, <laughs> Black Panther, that's right. Michael B. Jordan was in this movie as well. He made uh, in my top three, two movies in my top three from uh, Michael B. Jordan. Uh, this one directed by Ryan Coogler, who was the director of Creed I. Uh, so Black Panther made his mark in Civil War. I think this movie was a fun experience. And look, it's not the best movie of all time, but it was a great film. And I think a great experience in the theater, especially when uh, you're united with all those people in the theater, um, people cheering and clapping, I, I, I think it's uh, a worthwhile film. And obviously what the movie me means to a lot of people as well, um, people of color, I think uh, it's definitely a movie that will be remembered for the mark it's left in uh, history of cinema. And moving on to my number one favorite movie of 2018, Avengers Infinity War. That's right. Avengers Infinity War was my favorite superhero movie. If you've seen that list, um, you know that this one was coming. It had to. Uh, Avengers Infinity War might be my new favorite film of all time right now. The Dark Knight was my favorite movie of all time for the long for ten years, and now I feel like I'm ready to say it. Avengers Infinity War might be my favorite film currently um maybe time could change and maybe infinity war doesn't age well maybe it will depend on endgame on how that movie ends but right now the experience i had with this movie the crowd that was the energy of the crowd that was in the theater it was so much fun people were like clapping and cheering and and at the end obviously when that comes people are like stunned silence you can hear a pin drop it was just a great time. I hope Endgame brings that same energy to the theater because, man, if you have the chance to go see Endgame opening night, go check it out opening night. Because if Infinity War is any indication of what Endgame uh, might be like, uh, it it might be another really fun experience at the theater. So, uh I'm ready for it. And you got to be into these films. So hopefully you are into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You have seen enough of these films to follow along. There is a specific order, which I have done videos for, <laughs> that you can check out uh, how to watch the Marvel Cinematic Universe um, in chronological order. Um, that's what Infinity War is. It's accumulation of all 10 years of Marvel films. There's 20 films, I think, right now. Uh, next year there will be 23 films, so you, maybe you want to catch up now, you know, you have until May to catch up, so get ready. Uh, I, I think 2019, you can expect Avengers Endgame to probably make my top five, so <laughs> I'm already planning it. Um, so with that being said, guys, remember to leave down your lists in the comment section below. Uh, again, there's no right or wrong answers. Don't dislike just because you disagree with me like because hey this guy's doing video content and he's putting his thoughts out there he, you know he's vulnerable um i have thick skin so if you do say anything negative bring it on and uh, with that being said until next time like subscribe and take care